How often do you document your ages and stages, changes and how you feel as you get older or perhaps physical changes? I like to document these changes on a regular basis. In fact, for this process video, I'm creating an eight and a half by 11 layout where I'm telling the story of how I'm continuing to grow gray hair. This is one of many changes I have noticed as I have gotten older and over the years, and I wanna make sure that these stories are told. Stay tuned, this and more next on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel where we feature scrapbooking and crafting and everything in between. If you enjoy that content, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, that way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. So this layout I'm working on today is an eight and a half by 11 layout and it's called Happy and Gray. And I recently took a picture of my hair because I started noticing that my gray hair is starting to become more noticeable as I age. I have been graying since I was 20 and the gray kind of popped up here and there, but now it is becoming more pronounced. I have absolutely no intention of dyeing my hair. I'm gonna let it turn salt and pepper and be done with it. <laughs> so I think it's pretty cool that uh, my hair is graying a little bit and I'd be interested to see what I look like if uh, more continues to grow. But I definitely want to document this stage in my life. To create this layout, I am making a eight and a half by 11 layout using the Hip Kid Club kit from, I wanna say this is June or July. And what I wanna do is create a feature on the layout where it looks as though the paper was kind of torn, like someone took their hand and just ripped a slice of the paper, leaving whatever was underneath the paper exposed. So I'm taking some pattern paper from the kit and what I'm doing is with this yellow pattern paper, I'm tearing it so that it kind of feels like a long triangle. And so it looks kind of ripped. At first I was gonna use the white pattern paper as a background and the color paper to frame it out. But I decided that because I have the photo black and white and I printed the photo black and white because I think it exposes the gray more in my hair in that photo to really make it stand out. But that white paper was just making the photo just kind of blend in a little bit. It wasn't giving me the contrast that I want. So instead I'm gonna use that to mount my photo on just to create a little bit of interest behind the photo. And then I'm gonna take this torn piece of pattern paper and I'm gonna distress it a little bit more so a little bit of that white core can show. And then I'm bending up the edges. I've been seeing a lot of people tear paper recently and as a long time scrapbooker, this is a technique that I used to do a lot years ago, but now I'm starting to see people do it more and more to add texture to their pages, which I think is really cool. So I'm gonna position that to sort of the right-hand side of the layout. It's not quite centered. And then I'm also gonna create a hidden pocket behind my photo for my journaling. So the journaling talks about how I am definitely not afraid for my hair to turn gray. This is not something that I have a hang up over. I know for some people, they don't like the idea of turning gray, probably dye their hair, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I want to do is embrace these changes and I feel it's really important. And so I journal about that. And I knew that since I didn't have a ton of space on the layout, I'm gonna be doing some layered embellishing. I wanted to make sure that I got the story out as best as I could and had room for it. So I'm gonna create some hidden journaling behind the photo. Now the photo is cut down or actually printed a little bit under four by six. And so I kind of rough trimmed the journaling. I typed it on micro or typed it in Microsoft Word, printed it on white cardstock, and I just used my photo as a rough guide in terms of how big the card is. And it's roughly maybe about three by four, maybe a little bit bigger. And what I want to do to make it a hidden pocket using the fo uh, the photo is I'm going to add some foam strips to the back of the photo just to create sort of a buffer so that the uh, journaling card, if you will, the tag, if you will, will slide in and out. Now I made that tag using a We Are Memory Keepers punch and it has an angle style to it. And so I used the angle option to create the angles on the tag, thus creating my own tag. Once I have that in place, I didn't hear the photo just yet, uh, the pocket that is, the photo pocket, because I wanna make sure that if I need to move the photo around as I'm embellishing, then it's not stuck down and I'm not pulling it up and causing a whole issue. Now with this particular kit, there are tons of die cuts. These are Hip Kit Club exclusive die cuts and they're pretty large. And what I like to do with large die cuts is I like to use them to start clusters. They use, I use them as an anchor for my clusters. That large piece will be the focal point and then I will build up from there with smaller elements. So as you can see, I have those large floral die cuts that are tucked behind that ripped yellow pattern paper as well as the photo. I'm gonna go ahead and tear those down. 
And then I'm going to come in with some smaller embellishments like some leaves and butterflies. And majority of this layout is going to be die cut heavy. And that's okay because there's a lot of die cuts that come with these Hip Kit Club kits. And by the way, I will post the link to this specific kit in the description if you want to check it out. Now I'm going to come in with these fabric butterflies. They're fabulous. I'm going to pop them up using a little bit of foam, but I'm trying to get a sense of where I want everything. This was actually the first layout that I made on the day that I was courting uh, footage. And so I always say that my first layout is my worst layout. <laughs> and I like this layout. It's not one of my favorites that I've made recently, but what I like most about it is the photo. The photo is what is king on this layout and then everything else supports it. So sometimes when I design a layout, I design it with the elements in mind. So the die cuts and embellishments and things like that sort of being center and focal on the layout. But when I really want to focus on a story, I want to make sure that the photo is prominent and that I have enough space for words. And so in this layout, because I am talking about something that I feel is important and deep in my own life core story, I wanted to make sure that not only did the photo represent the story, but I had enough space for my words as well. And I didn't want too many things impeding upon the photo because of course I'm talking about the gray hair and you can see that prominently in the photo. To the clusters, I added the butterflies, popped those up with a little bit of foam. I also added another flower or a couple of flowers just to kind of flesh out those, those floral clusters. Then I come in with some wood veneer stickers that come in the kit and to frame out the photo and I ultimately decide I don't like that so I take it away and you'll see that at the end. I'm going to go ahead and work on my title. I love using two different fonts, font styles, font colors for my titles. I just feel that it makes it pop. So I'm going to create the title that says happy and gray and truly I am. As I mentioned, I have no hangups about this part of my body changing. I've hangups on other parts of my body changing, but gray hair is not one of them. And so I want to document this as authentically as I can in celebration. And in fact, the colors that I chose and the elements that I chose, um, I wanted it to be happy and bright because this is a part of a change in me that I actually love. And so I wanted the layout to represent that as well. I'm going to bring in these Heidi Swap label stickers that came with the kit and I'm sort of shopping them around the layout and I'm getting frustrated with myself because that process went on for far longer than what I wanted it to. So I have one label that says trust the process and another one that says living my best life because I am trusting this process of what mother nature has in store for me as my body changes. I also have a label at the bottom that says like forever <laughs> because I have no intention on dyeing my hair and so this will be my hair. Whatever it turns out to be is what it's going to be. Now towards the end of putting this layout together, and I'm sure you all can definitely relate to this relatable content here, is when is determining when to stop. <laughs> so there's other elements that I want to add to the page, but I don't want to add too much because it's only eight and a half by 11 and I don't want it to look all crazy. So I add a little coffee cup that says you are number one. And if you've been around for a while, you know, I love coffee. Then I also added another wood veneer that says, wow, underneath the label on the left, right hand side. And then I want to balance that out. So I'm going to pop another wood veneer piece, an arrow, and that's kind of shooting towards my head there, which looks kind of weird, but it's going to stay. <laughs> that wood veneer piece is there for texture to balance it out. I went ahead and removed those little photo corners, the wood veneer photo corners, because I felt they were too heavy. But I brought in this little clip from Felicity Jane, just reaching into my stash there. You can see my We Are Memory Keepers bloom. I keep a lot of small embellishments and reach for that when I need just a little something, something to go on the layout. And that definitely helped me out with the wood veneer arrow and the clip. Now, here's the thing. Whenever I make tags, I always debate whether or not I want to add some fiber to the tag. And usually it's a no because I don't, for whenever I do it, I don't like the way it looks. When somebody else adds fiber to their tags on their layouts, I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. That's beautiful. For me, it just doesn't hit my eye whenever I do it. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of twine from American Crafts. This is actually navy blue and white twine. I'm going to stick there at the top. I'm going to trim it and then it's too short and then it won't lay the way that I want it. And so I abandon that because I don't like it. It looked weird to me. So I let that go. Then I thought, you know what, let's do a hole enforcer. So I get my We Are Memory Keepers hole enforcer punch out and a little bit of the paper that comes with the kit. And that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and add that to the tag that gives a little bit more grounding, makes it a little bit more of a finished element on the layout. I'm going to use some Barely Art glue to adhere that reinforcer there to the tag. And at this point, I'm trying to decide, do I want to add fiber to this? And so I thought, you know what, let's make a bow. Now here's the thing, I don't make bows very well. I just accept that about myself, I just don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this bow, I'm gonna attempt to make the bow, but it's gonna be a wonky bow and it's not gonna stay the way that I want it. I'm getting kind of frustrated. Ultimately guys, long story short, 
when you see the finished product, what I decided to do instead was to wrap the twine around the opening of the tag and call it a day versus, you know, having a bow. To finish this out, I'm going to do a little bit of stamping on the tab that's there at the top with the tag. And the stamp is going to say yes to this. And this is from Ellie Studio. I love these label stamps because it's perfect for stuff like this. Not only stamping in other places of your layouts, but also adding some text to tags. So I'm going to go ahead and use some, uh, I think that was the VersaFine Claire ink, which I love. It's a very nice, nice pigmented ink. And there we go, got that stamped right there on that tab. And I'm just adding that as an additional layer by the tag. I just think it gives a little bit more grounding, a little bit more interest to the layout. I'm trying to straighten up that bow. Ultimately, it's gonna go away because it just frustrates me. And you know what? If I just fiddle faddle with stuff too much and I get frustrated, I take it off the layout. <laughs> so here we go. A completed eight and a half by 11 layout using the, I believe is the June Hip Kid Club kit. Love all of the layering on this one, but more importantly, I love that the story is focal and central talking about this part of my life course. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't already in your scrapbooking journey, is to document those stories about your changes for yourself, not anybody else, but changes that are happening for you and be honest and authentic about how you feel about those changes and make those a part of your storytelling journey. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. And when you do, click the bell. That way you'll be notified each and every time a new video is posted. I'll see you in the next one.